Hey, welcome. In this video, I'll go through the polarization drift. This is something which turns up very often in, in reduced MHD models or reduced drift models in general. Um, and there are several different ways of, of deriving it or thinking about it. Uh, one is just a, a simple single part, particle picture, just to give an idea of what it what it means. Uh, then I'll show one derivation from from single particle uh, momentum equation, and then finally show how it comes out from the uh, the fluid equations as well. And so there are there are several different ways of getting to it. Uh, one way often is through uh, through conservation of, of charge, so current conservation. Um, another way is through momentum, and they're linked because the forces are in, in a MHD are due to the currents in the plasma, and so there's there's a link between the currents and the and the forces, and so the momentum. So let's start with a single particle picture. Um, now this is where you have a magnetic field. Let's say it's it's coming out of the page, for example, and they have a charged particle, so like an, an ion, so it's a positive charge, and then we imagine it's sitting still, so it has has velocity is is zero. At, at sort of t equals zero, <coughs> and then we turn on an electric field. So we so we switch on an electric field in the x direction. This is this kind of x direction here, um, and then what will happen is the the iron will start to accelerate, and this, the iron will be moving now. So the iron is is moving, and because there's a magnetic field, the iron will be deflected uh, downwards in this case. And so the iron will follow an, an orbit. And so you get a it's kind of drifting orbit like this. And so the, the drift here is the E cross B velocity. So V drift is just E cross B over B squared. Um, but what you'll notice is that the uh, the center of this orbit is shifted from where it was originally. So there's a if I draw here the center of this orbit, um, the iron starts over here, and there's now a, a shift, shift delta. And that shift is the polarization of the plasma. So when you switch on an electric field, the ions accelerate in the direction of the electric field, um, and then are deflected. And, and going to go there, their normal orbits. Uh, but it's the shift which is the polarization of the plasma. Yeah, this is this is polarization, and so this is what happens when you have a, an electric field suddenly turns on. Um, but the same thing happens when you have an electric field which which is changing gradually. So if you have a, a changing electric field, it induces a shift in the in the center of the the iron orbits, and this shift is the polarization. So it's the shift in the average location of the of the particles. So that's some idea of what the what polarization is. Um, you can derive an expression for it. So if we start with a single particle momentum, so the equation of motion for a single particle, uh, which have the mass of the particle, and that's the, the change in momentum is just the force, which is just of course Q E plus V cross B. So that's the Lorentz force on, on the particle. Um, if you now take a cross product of this with with magnetic field over b squared, so a cross product with, with b vector over b squared, um, and all the cross products on the on the right side. So what you end up with is we have a, an m. I'm going to bring this q over this side, so we have a q and a b squared, and then we have a dv by dt crossed with b. So that's this part here. Uh, on this side, I've brought the Q over the other side, so just have E cross B of B squared, which of course is the, the drift. And then here, what we have is a, we have a, a V cross B cross with B, all over B squared. So the second part here, we can rewrite using a vector identity, so this is just minus v, and then you get a b dot b over b squared, that cancels out. And then here we get a, uh, what do we have here, so we have a, a v dot with b, a b over b squared. And all this does, so v dot b is the, the parallel part of, of v, um, it's in the parallel direction, 
and then this just normalizing so these become basically unit vectors. And so this whole thing, uh, this is just the parallel component of V. And so this part is the, the total V, and then we take out the parallel part. And so what's left over, this is just the perpendicular uh, velocity. And so this whole thing, uh, this whole thing here, we just write as the, the perpendicular velocity. So this is minus V perp. So yeah, perpendicular, this means perpendicular to the magnetic field. Okay, so now we have an expression for, for the perpendicular magnetic field. Uh, so we can just rearrange this, this equation and put this, this V perp on the left hand side. So we have that V perpendicular is just E cross B over B squared. That's this first term here. Um, and then this term here, so we have a, a minus So I notice here is that this the second term uh, here we have a d by dt. So so if say d by dt is roughly omega is some kind of frequency of some kind of plasma oscillation. Here we have a, a qb over uh, or a qb over m. So qb over m is the cyclotron frequency. So it's, let's call it omega. I, for example, is the cyclotron frequency, and so this part here is is approximately the ratio of of the frequency over the cyclotron frequency, and so this second term, the second term here, is like omega over over cyclotron frequency, and so this term is small compared to this first term, and this allows us to to solve this problem. So we have a, a V perpendicular here, and we have a velocity in here. So the, time, the steady state uh, velocity depends on, on its time derivative. Uh, but what we can do is because the second term is so small, we can take the first order approximation. So V perpendicular, so first order approximation is E cross B over B squared. And then there's a second term we're missing out, which is this term, which is of order and we go over for cyclotron frequency. Um, and then we can take this expression and we can substitute it into here. And so we just say that, that the second order approximation is roughly, so we have E cross B over B squared. And then we have, so what we get when you substitute this approximation into here. So we have an M over Q B squared. And then we have a, a D by DT of, of the E cross B velocity. And that's crossed with B. Okay, so now we've just taken this first approximation, substituted it into here. So that's, so that's just gone into, into there. Okay, in principle we could then carry on. Uh, so you could take this expression and substitute it into, into here again, and you get the third order approximation, and keep going this sort of infinite, infinite series. But in practice, this is, this is usually enough, and this is as far as, as most models go. Uh, so just keep this, this first term here for the parallelization drift. And this can be used um, to work out the, the center of the, the orbit um, in terms of a drift and in terms of this, this parallelization. And then finally, to, to simplify this, uh, if we say that, that B uh, is roughly constant, so it's not evolving in time, or it's not compared to the, the electric field, um, in that case this, this B can just go through, and we can just write that the E, E cross B, again crossed with B, all over B squared, um, that is just E perpendicular, so the minus. So it's the perpendicular um, electric field, Again, similar to the velocity earlier, uh, this term just takes out the parallel component of, of the electric field. So we have here a, a term where we have, so the velocity perpendicular to the field to second order in, in this ratio of, of frequency uh, over, over cyclotron frequency. So we have the, this is like omega squared over 
cyclotron frequency squared, uh, which typically this is this very small number, so so this is a, a small error in principle. Um, so there we can write this as, and I can see that this this just re rewriting this, so substituting this e perpendicular into into here. Um, what we have is this is the polarization drift. So if you look at the, the first example I um, showed where you have a, an iron which is sitting still, and you turn on an electric field, or you can work out the change in position, so the, the change in the location is just the integral of, of the drift in the extraction um, over time. And here if we ignore the E cross B drift, so we're just looking at the, the extractions, the horizontal, um, this was just, it's just the integral of this M over QB squared uh, dy dt of, of e x and then integrating in time. Um, m of qb squared obviously is constant and then we're just integrating the, the gradient and so it's just the change in electric field. So it's just m over qb squared times the change in electric field. And so the, the shift, the radial shift, um, is just proportional to the change in the electric field um, with this mass. And so, because it depends on the mass, uh, this is typically large for ions and typically ignored for electrons. So finally, I'd like to show how this can be derived from the fluid equations. So it, uh, it's often derived in a slightly different way from, from uh, fluid. So if you're starting from MHD or, or two, fluid, uh, two fluid equations. So it's usually derived from the momentum equation. So we start with the momentum equation for a fluid. So we have du by dt, where u is now the, the fluid velocity. So we might have something like this. We have a, a pressure, for example, and I have a, a j cos p force. Um, the same thing works for if this is the momentum for the ions, for example. Uh, but here I'll just show from, from ideal MHD in this case. Um, so what we do is we take the curl, um, and that has some advantages that the, the gradient, so curl of, the, of grad p is is zero, um, and that gives all any kind of pressure, and so this gives us a, a vorticity, or leads to a vorticity equation. So it just as for a, a neutral fluid, the same for plasmas, you can take the curl of the momentum equations and you get a get vorticity equations. Um, the same thing you can write in terms of a of current continuity, as I, I said before. So the polarization comes from this first part here. So this this time derivative of the of the velocity. And so if we, if we, for example, take take the b, so unit vector along magnetic field divided by b, and cross that with, with this term here, so we have a, a rho times du by dt. Uh, we can turn this into, into a basic polarization equation. So if you put a, a q over here, we can use a vector identity and just rewrite this is this is the curl of B over capital B um, dotted with I have rho du by dt uh, and divided by q. Okay, so that's that's the first part. And then we have a again divergence. Now in here we have all these other factors. So we have a b crossed. So now if we assume that the this b unit vector um, is not changing. So I, I d by dt is, is zero. Um, then we can move this this b inside inside this. And the same trick as before. So we have basically u crossed with magnetic field. Um, this is going to give us a, a perpendicular electric field. In the fluid equations, the, the velocity or the zero, the first order velocity comes from the Ohm's law. And so Ohm's law gives us Uh, is e cross e plus b cross b is equal to zero, uh, and now if you take cross product of this with uh, with b, so e e cross b, now we have a v cross or sorry u cross b, so this is fluid velocity, and then cross b. And this, of course, just gives the same. This is just minus u perpendicular, uh, and so that this just says that u perpendicular is just e cross b over v squared. So this is u cross b 
uh, here just gives it b squared. So this whole thing just says that the, the perpendicular flow is just the e cross b, e cross b drift. So remember, it's the, the first order approximation from the from the single particle picture. Um, so we, in ideal MHD, you have have this uh, expression for u perp, and we substitute that back into into this here. So this u perp goes into into here. That's this u. Uh, u parallel doesn't matter because this is a cross product with with b. So any parallel components uh, can vanish, and so what we end up with are uh, is basically these two terms, but we have this gives us the same as for a single particle picture, so it's a b crossed with a, with e cross b. Um, this just gives an e perpendicular, um, and then divided by a b. And what we're going to do is we're going to assume that that these gradients of equilibrium quantities are small. So assume that this this term here is small. So it's a, this is basically a curvature term. So this term is assumed to be small compared to this term. And so what we end up with is so with the time derivative of the electric field. And then this row has the has the mass term. And so this, this term here is basically the, the polarization drift. So you end up with a, a divergence of the polarization drift if you do this. Um, this is here is a partial derivative, and that's because we only took the first term as partial u by dt. If you keep the the full uh, convective derivative term, then this of course is, is d by dt, um, and then it's exactly the same. You just take d by dt of, of this, and you end up with the, the full polarization drift. Um, so it's this this first part here gives you gives you the full d by dt of of electric field. So it should really guess, be this this part here. So this part gives you gives you dE by dt, where the this derivative includes the convective part, so it's moving along with, with the fluid. Okay, so that's this is one way you can drive the polarization drift. So it's the uh, the curl of the momentum equation gives you gives you this term, um, or you can think about it in terms of, of single particle orbits, um, and then driving in orders, so first order, second order um, expansions in the in the orbits.